Imagine running for 20 hours with lactate levels so high they'd force almost any athlete to quit. And instead of collapsing, you launch your winning attack. That's not a fantasy. That's exactly what Killian Jornet did at the UTMB. The most iconic ultra trail race in the world, Killian isn't just another runner with medals, he's something closer to a living experiment in human adaptation. His body and his mind don't just perform, they redefine what performance even means. And today we're going to break down exactly why scientists are in awe of him. We'll talk about lactate, gut health, altitude, and yes, his mindset. By the end, you'll understand why his physiologist calls him a biological model of extreme adaptation. And who knows, you might even take away a principle that could change how you approach your own training, your work, or even challenges in everyday life. Let's start with lactate because this is where the story gets wild. For decades, athletes and coaches have treated lactate like a villain. Stay below the red line or you'll drown in lactic acid. In labs and textbooks, hitting 8 or 10 millimoles per liter is a clear sign of shutdown. Your body is producing more lactate than it can clear. Muscles burn, your pace drops, game over. Now picture Killian at UTMB 2022. He's not at 8, he's not at 10. He's at 20 millimoles per liter. That's the kind of reading that for almost any athlete means collapse. For Killian, that's the moment he attacked. He surged past the competition and secured one of his greatest victories. How is that possible? It turns out Killian's body doesn't treat lactate as poison. It treats it as fuel. His heart muscle and his slow twitch fibers are trained to recycle it, turning waste into energy. Imagine a factory that takes garbage and transforms it into clean electricity on the spot. That's Killian's metabolism in action. And it gets crazier. Most athletes rely on one primary pathway at a time, either burning glucose or tapping into fat stores or using ketones. Killian can run all three engines simultaneously. Glucose, fats, ketones, and yes, even lactate burning together. Like a hybrid car that runs on gas, electricity, and solar at the same time. No wonder he's still accelerating when others are running on fumes. This ability has a name. Metabolic flexibility. It's the holy grail of endurance. Switch between fuels instantly. Never run out of gas. Plenty of athletes chase it with diets, fasts, or supplements. But Killian? He trains it in the wild under real conditions while carefully tracking every reaction. He's built a gut that can keep up with his legs. And that's huge because ultras aren't just battles of muscle. They're battles of digestion. If your gut inflames, if it shuts down, you're finished. Many athletes drop not because of sore legs, but because their stomach says enough. Killian and his team know this. They've studied how his digestive system reacts in every terrain. On long descents, where intensity drops, he can handle fats and proteins. On steep climbs, where effort spikes, only liquids with specific carbs. Every detail adjusted. It's not just calories in, it's what your body can actually absorb without inflaming. That's a key lesson. You can load gels and bars until your pockets explode, but if your gut can't process them, you're done. Killian's secret isn't just eating more, it's eating smarter. Now let's climb higher, literally, altitude. For many, altitude training is a trend. Go to 2000 meters, post a photo on Instagram, and call it science. But Killian doesn't do altitude for the hype. He knows the exact stimulus he's creating. His physiologist, Jesus Alvarez Herms, actually wrote his PhD on hypoxia. He explains it like this, hypoxia doesn't just improve oxygen transport, it can also boost anaerobic performance and trigger deep adaptations. Here's what's wild, most athletes adapt in just one way. Some see gains in lung capacity, others in red blood cells, others in muscle fibers. Killian? He adapts in all three, his lungs, his blood, and his muscles all respond at once. That's why when others are gasping for survival above 3000 meters, Killian still looks smooth, calm, efficient. He's not just surviving altitude, he's weaponizing it. But physiology alone doesn't explain Killian. The other half of the equation is his mindset. There was a moment on the trail when I realized just how much the mind matters. My legs were tired, the altitude was crushing, 
and physically I felt close to done. But what kept me moving wasn't strength. It was mindset. And that's why I think conversations about mental health are so important, not only in extreme situations, but also in everyday life. Making support convenient and accessible can make a huge difference. And that's exactly where BetterHelp comes in. I also want to thank them for sponsoring this deep dive. BetterHelp launched back in 2013 with a simple mission. Make starting therapy easier by removing the barriers that keep people from getting help. It's about rethinking how we access care. And the scale is impressive. They've grown into the world's largest online therapy service, helping over 5 million people. That really shows how big the need is and how technology is finally making mental health care more accessible. So how does it work? In essence, it's a lot like traditional therapy. A BetterHelp therapist listens, asks thoughtful questions, helps you see things from new perspectives, and gives you practical tools to make positive changes. And when it comes to the therapists themselves, BetterHelp has a network of over 30,000 licensed professionals, psychologists, marriage and family therapists, social workers and counselors, all properly vetted with the right degrees, state board licenses, at least three years of experience, and over a thousand hours of hands-on practice. Getting started is much simpler than making phone calls and waiting weeks. You fill out a short questionnaire about your needs and preferences, and BetterHelp matches you with a therapist who fits. Often that happens in just a couple of days, and if the first match isn't right, no problem. You can switch therapists anytime. Therapy is personal and finding the right connection is key. Communication is flexible too. You can message your therapist whenever you need and you can schedule live sessions through chat, phone, or video, whatever works for you. And in terms of trust, BetterHelp has a strong track record. On Trustpilot, they've got more than 7,000 reviews with an average rating of 4.3. Cost is always a factor. Most athletes want to win medals, break records, or beat rivals. Killian, he's chasing something harder to define. The invisible line between possible and impossible. He doesn't just want to finish first. He wants to know what happens when a human body is pushed to the edge. That's why he started working with Alvarez Herms. He didn't just want splits or times, he wanted data from inside, lactate curves, mitochondrial responses, gut absorption. He wanted to understand the machine, not just the finish line. Alvarez calls it systemic health, and it's a concept that could change how you think about endurance, because you can't demand six hours without water, or a marathon in ketosis unless your entire system is ready. Kidneys, liver, gut, nervous system, mitochondria, they all need to be in harmony. Think of it like an orchestra. You don't win a symphony with one violin. You need every instrument tuned and in sync. Killian has built that harmony deliberately, piece by piece, year after year. So is Killian unique? The answer is yes, but not because of a single magic gene. He's unique by combination. Genetics play a role, but so do his microbiota, the community of bacteria in his gut. So does the altitude where he lives, the way he trains, the way he eats, the way he thinks. And yes, even pure randomness, mutations, chance, circumstances no one can copy. That's why even if his kids grow up running the same trails, at the same altitudes, with the same training, they still won't become him, because genetics don't copy-paste, and no one relives the same life story. Killian is the result of biology, psychology, and environment, lining up in a once-in-a-generation way. He's not just an athlete. He's the biological evolution of endurance. Now here's the part that matters for you and me, <laughs> because none of us are Killian Jornet. But the principles behind his success? They're universal. Train your body to use multiple fuels. Don't just live on carbs or fats. Teach your body to switch. Pay attention to what your gut can handle, not just what's on the label. Respect altitude, but also understand it's more than hype, it's a training tool. And maybe most important, embrace curiosity. Don't just ask, can I finish? Ask, what happens if I push a little further? What can I learn about myself? Because in the end, Killian's greatest victory isn't UTMB wins or records. It's proving that humans, even in a modern world where we rarely face extremes, 
still have the ability to adapt. We can still be resilient. We can still reinvent ourselves when we reach the edge. And that's a message bigger than mountain running. It's about rediscovering what it means to be human 